fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! Early one morning, Buckeye Norton, the foreman at the Paradise Mine entered the office of a lawyer named Hasp Solon in the town of Gunstock. As Buckeye closed the door, he said, Hasp, I hear the boss died of pneumonia last night. He did, Buckeye. Now I'll be the owner of the Paradise Mine. Pete Marvel thought a lot of you, but he thought more of his own flesh and blood. Huh? You'll get the mine if Pete's nephew Johnny dies before he claims it and takes over. What? Those are the terms of Pete's will that's on file with the town clerk. I thought all his relatives were dead. Johnny's the only one alive. Kill him before he gets legal possession of the mine, and it's yours. You're talking murder. It wouldn't be your first. What? You and a man named Doby Rapson killed and robbed a rancher in Pecos 21 years ago. How'd you know that? Doby signed a confession before he died. I have the confession, naming you as his partner. What? I've kept quiet about the crime because I knew what Pete Marvel thought of you. I figured someday you'd own the Paradise Mine. So that's it. I'll sell the confession to you for half the mine. I can't kill Johnny Marvel. I'd be the first one suspected of the murder. Make me half owner of the Paradise, and I'll see that Johnny doesn't live long enough to take possession. You've made a bargain, Hess. A couple of weeks later, Buckeye came into the town of Gunstock to buy supplies for the mine. After he bought what was needed, he drove the buckboard to Hasp Solon's office and hurried inside. Hasp, as I came to town an hour ago, I heard from half a dozen people that Johnny Marvel's due in Gunstock sometime this week. No one knows it, but he'll arrive today. You told me two days ago you plan to take care of him before he hit town. I do. Then why spread the news he's coming? The law will think the killer was on the lookout for Johnny, hoping to steal a lot of money. Yeah, that might fool the law, but it doesn't sound smart to me. I don't care how it sounds to you. I'm running the risk in this killing. I want to be sure no one suspects the real reason for it. Ah. Huh. Hand me my rifle, will you? It's in the corner near the door. Yeah, sure. This is a mighty odd-looking sharps. What's different about it? It's a left-handed rifle. What do you mean, left-handed? The knob that ejects the cartridges is in the left side instead of the right. You left-handed? Yes. Where are you going with the rifle? 
Johnny Marvel will ride along the old covered wagon trail toward town sometime this afternoon. You sure? I had a letter from him last week telling me the time he planned to arrive. I'll find a hiding place above the trail and wait for him. Good luck. Don't worry. When I get back to town, he'll be dead. The Lone Ranger's Indian friend, Tonto, had also been in gun stock to buy supplies. When he returned to camp in the hills, a short distance from the old covered wagon trail, he had bad news for his masked friend. Oh, Scott. Oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Me learn in town, Kimasabi. Old friend named Pete Marble dead. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Him die of uh, pneumonia two, three weeks ago. He was a fine man. Uh, him do lot. Helped build west. Who'll take over the Paradise Mine? Uh, Feller in store, say. Pete leave mine to nephew, Johnny Marble. I didn't know he had a nephew. Storekeeper say Johnny 20, 21. Him come from east this week. Take charge of mine. He has a big job ahead of him. Yes, plenty big job. Run mine like that. Yes, he'll need constant help. Kim Harvey. Rifle fire, Tonto. Oh, it sounds like shots come from covered wagon trail. We'll find out what they mean. Easy, 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 easy fella. Let's go. man and his Indian friend raced downhill. Before they reached the bottom of the heavily wooded slope, they saw a rider hurrying away. Someone in big hurry, get away. He must have seen us coming. Maybe a fellow who fire shots. Look down there on the trail. Ah, fellow on ground. You see how badly he's hurt. Minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein beside the still form of Johnny Marble. As Tonto examined his wound, the young Easterner's eyes opened. Oh, oh no. Uh, take it easy. Uh, the Indian. Me try help you. How bad is the wound, Tonto? Not bad. Me think him be all right. Good. You, your mask. The mask needn't alarm you. We're here as friends. Friends? Who are you? If you have my wallet, you know my name. Identification papers are in it. We not shoot you. You, you didn't. If we had, we wouldn't be trying to help you now. Oh, I didn't think of that. When I saw your mask... I understand. Up, my name's John Marvel. Are you Pete Marvel's nephew? Yes. How don't I knew your uncle well? Huh? I didn't know he had any outlaw friends. He knew what my mask meant. Oh, no, no offense, mister. I appreciate your effort to help me. Uh, were you robbed? I don't know. I lost consciousness when the bullet knocked me from the saddle. I... I don't see him. My wallet's missing. No, no. Take oh, it easy. Oh. Take it easy, fella. I guess I'd better take it easy. My wallet's in the breast pocket of my coat. Uh, let me see if it's gone. What about it, Tonto? Uh, here, wallet. Is there any money left in it? Maybe paper money here. Well, then he, he didn't take any. Apparently, he didn't have time... What do you mean? We scare him off. Oh. While you're bandaging his wound, Toto, I'll look for tracks. When the masked man rejoined Toto and the wounded Easterner, Johnny was sitting up, grinning sheepishly. I, I owe you an apology. Oh? Tonto told me who you are. Years ago, my uncle mentioned you in one of his letters... I'd almost forgotten it until Tonto explained how you met Uncle Pete. He was a good friend of ours. I, I'm grateful to you for helping me. I'm glad we were near when you needed us. Uh, Tonto, if you'll come with me, I'll show you where the ambush awaited for Johnny. Two minutes later, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Johnny Marvel rode to the place above the trail where Hasp Solon had waited for his victim. Toto pointed to the ground. Uh, track show. Ambusher. Life flat. Him make mark there with toe boot. He aimed his rifle from that position. Why do you say that? Here's the imprint of his elbow. He used that arm to support his rifle. Ah. Uh. You'll notice his right arm and elbow supported the weapon. Ah. 
And that means he pulled trigger with left hand. Yes. The man we want is left-handed. It's remarkable that you're able to learn so much from tracks on the ground. Once you've been trained to observe them, Johnny, tracks are easier to read than handwriting on a wall. Nevertheless, I... Uh, no, what matter? Are you going to fall, oh, Tonto? No. Uh, 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 steady, Johnny, uh, steady. Sorry. I'm weaker than that. Uh, now, now, you lean on me. Yes, uh, steady, Silver. Stay with him, Tonto, while I follow the tracks of the man who fired those shots. I, I'll be all right. You better take it easy for a while. I'll see you later. Come on, Silver. Johnny watched the Lone Ranger right away. Then turn to Toto. I'll be able to ride to town if I travel slowly. Um, I, I'd like to get there before dark. We not reach town before dark. We could try. All right, Johnny. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cause champions are made not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Champions are made, not born. There's an adage that's ever so true. For instance, Slam and Sammy Sneed, a golfer as good as they come. Young Sam learned golf the only way. He practiced hours every day, chipping them short, driving them long. And soon he learned what keeps champs strong. Wheaties with milk, you can't go wrong. Today, Sam rates the gallery's cheers. A Wheaties eater, 17 years. Right. Sammy Sneed is a Wheaties eater from way back. Plenty of nourishment in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Sammy, drive that ball. What? Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. Dusk was falling when Hasp Solon returned to Gunstock. After he lit a lamp in his office, he lowered the shades carefully and concealed the rifle. Then he headed for the cafe. As he went through the batwing doors, he saw Buckeye. He hurried toward the big foreman. Buckeye, what are you doing here? I thought you went back to the mine. I waited in town purposely to see you. Uh, let's go over to a table. I want to sit down. Two, three. Uh, bring me the usual, Hank. Right. You're white as a full moon, Hasp. I need something to steady my nerves. Well, it's on the way. Here you are, gents. I need the bottle. Thanks. Don't mention it. I don't have to ask. I can tell from the looks of you that you got Johnny Marvel. Yeah, I got him. But things didn't go as I planned. What do you mean? I fired twice. The first shot missed, and his horse bucked. But the second hit him. Good. He fell from the saddle. He stretched out on the ground, still as a rock. Then, just as I was about to go down there to get his money, I, I saw riders. Riders? A couple of them coming downhill fast. They must have heard the shots. For a minute, I wondered whether I had time enough to go down, steal his money, and clear out. But they kept coming fast. I, I couldn't risk being seen, so I cleared out. Without making sure Johnny's dead? I did my best. I hope your best was good enough. Where are you going? Back to the mine. As soon as his body's brought to town, let me know. If he's brought in alive, we'll be in real trouble. Uh, uh, what do you mean? You agreed to kill him. Keep the bargain. Ask Solon sat alone for some time. Then, deciding that someone would soon notify the sheriff of the shooting, he walked down the street to Sheriff Lemon's office. When he opened the door, he was shocked to see Johnny Marble talking to the lawman. An Indian was with the young Easterner. Well, what is it, Has? Uh, I didn't mean to intrude, Sheriff. Well, come on in. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. The sheriff called you Hat. If your last name's Solon, you're my Uncle Pete's attorney. Yes. Uh, meet Johnny Marble, Has. That is, if you haven't met him before. We've never met. But I've had letters from Mr. Solon since my uncle died. Yeah, I'm glad to meet you, Johnny. Johnny is lucky to be here, Has. Uh, really? He stopped a dry gulcher's bullet. If Tondo and his friend hadn't helped me, I might have died from loss of blood before I could reach town. They were just giving me a report of the shooting. We still, we think left-handed man shoot Johnny. Well, how could you tell that? Well, 
There are plenty sign. Plenty easy to see. Mark on the ground showed that the man who shot me was lying flat on the ground when he pulled the trigger. He rested his rifle on his right arm and elbow. Say, come to think of it, Hasp, you're left-handed. Uh, yes, What's but... What's more, uh... you own a special left-handed sharps. The ejector knob's on the left side instead of the right. <laughs> if you're suggesting that I shot Johnny Sheriff... I'm not suggesting anything. Uh, the fact that I'm left-handed may be suspicious, but there are a lot of left-handed men in the world. Uh, maybe, Mr. Solon. But I've just thought of something else. Huh? You were the only one who knew when I planned to arrive in... Well, everyone in town can get here sometime this week, Johnny. But I wrote to Mr. Solon telling him I'd arrive today. Huh? And he knew you'd be on the covered wagon trail this afternoon. Of course he did. In my letter, I told him I planned to buy a horse and saddle when I got off the train in Molan City, 20 miles from here. Uh, Stand still, Uh, Sheriff. A gun. What's your idea, Hess? Keep your hands high, all of you. Uh, We better do what I'm saying. You have good sense, Redskin. Drawing that gun is an admission of guilt. That's the least of my worries right now. So you were the one who shot me. I meant to kill you. Why? That's my business. Uh, You look who did you... You can't get away with holding us here... If you fire three shots, the whole town will come on the run to investigate. I know that. Uh, put down the gun. Not on your life, Sheriff. We're leaving here. To go where? Across the street to my office where we'll not be interrupted. First, Johnny, disarm the sheriff and your Indian friend. Now, wait a minute. Follow orders. And don't try a fast move. All right. When the three prisoners were disarmed, Hasp said, Now lead the way out the door and across the street to my office, Johnny. The Indian will be behind you, and the sheriff will walk in front of me. My gun will be at his back every step of the way. If either of you try to get away or call for help while we're in the open, I'll blow a hole through the sheriff's back. You dirty scurry. Remember, his life is in your hands. Now start moving. Concealing his gun as carefully as possible, Asp followed the prisoners across the deserted street. He watched the three men so closely that he didn't notice a moving shadow revealed for a moment in his lighted office. But Tonto saw it and hoped that the drawn shades on the office windows concealed his masked friend. Keep moving, Sheriff. We're almost to the door. If I get out of this alive, I'll see that you spend the rest of your life behind bars. Is the door locked? Yes. Am I supposed to walk through it? I'll toss the key to the step. Pick it up and unlock the door. But don't try a fast move. If I could think of a fast move that wouldn't endanger the sheriff's life, I'd try it. Step inside. You follow him, Indian. Then you, Sheriff. Toto was close on Johnny's heels as the young Easterner entered the office. Out of the corner of his eye, the Indian saw the masked man standing against the wall behind the door. Seeing Tonto's upraised hands, the Lone Ranger understood the situation. He drew his gun. Go on, Sheriff. Inside. I'll close the door. All right, all right. Keep your hands high. Drop the gun. As the Lone Ranger spoke, he brought the barrel of his coat down hard against Hasp's thin wrist. The lawyer's gun flew from his hand and he screamed in pain. My wrist! You broke my wrist! Tonto stooped quickly to retrieve the gun the lawyer had dropped. That gun came us me. Good work, Tonto. Mister, you saved our lives. Hey, what's going on here? Who's the master? Uh, him, friend, Sheriff. Yes, he proved he's a friend by disarming that telefaced lawyer. But that master... Sheriff, he's the Lone Ranger. The, the Lone Ranger? Yes. He and Tonto found me on the trail after Hasp shot me. Well, mister, I'm downright glad to meet you, especially here now. But I don't savvy how you happen to be in this office. I forced the lock on the back door to get in. Uh, illegal entry, dog, got it? I found this rifle. Solon's left-handed sharps rifle. I was going to your office to tell you what I learned when I heard you coming this way. You know the rest. Well, Hasp, the tables are turned now. You had no right to break into my office. You're in no position to make any complaints. You're under arrest, you dirty, dry, gulching crook. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. Jail's right across the street. Start walking. No, no, let me talk. You've got nothing to talk about. This wasn't my idea, Sheriff. No? Buckeye planned it. He wanted me to kill Johnny. The foreman at the Paradise Mine? Yes, but uh, I don't even know him. According to the terms of your uncle's will, 
Buckeye will inherit the mine if you die before taking legal possession of the property and without leaving any heirs. Oh. Buckeye offered me half of the mine if I, I killed Johnny. It'll be your word against Buckeye. He's a criminal, Sheriff, a killer. You were the one who tried to do the killing. The proof of his killing is in my safe. Open it and see for yourself. All right. Call off the combination. The masked man will open the safe. Yeah. Uh, three times to the right, to six. To the left, to twelve. Hit around once to twenty-one. A short time later, the Lone Ranger found the paper Hassett described. He glanced at it quickly, then handed it to the sheriff. The lawman read it rapidly. This'll hang, Buckeye. I told you he was a killer. Thanks for the information. After you are behind bars, we'll get him. Shortly after daybreak the next morning, Hasp Solon stared sleeplessly from the barred window of a jail cell, while Buckeye paced the floor of the cell next to him. You dirty double cross and weasel face half pint. If I could get my hands on you, oh, I... quiet down, Buckeye. If there was some way to get through these bars into that cell, I'd break every bone in your body. I wasn't going to take all the blame. You should take all the blame. Killing Johnny was your idea. You're as guilty as I am. Only because I had to go along with you. I agreed to pay you half of the mine to buy that confession. Oh, shut up. Instead of buying a confession, I bought a trip to the gallows. Don't blame me. I'll blame you as long as I live. You'll not live long, thanks to the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.